about 382 AD. In the days of Jerome, known for the Latin Vulgate, a new term began to circulate in Bible scholarship, according to R.H. Charles. Certain texts of historical value, and even canon, were now labeled as something other than inspired scripture. The very concept is a clear redefining of books already in existence, and in most cases, text recorded as inspired scripture and Bible canon now somehow in question by those without any such authority. This paradigm remains today even further rooted as if it ever represented the historical approach to these Old Testament texts as some vet as truth. How do these texts stand up to the Torah test? The answer on many of these books will likely shock especially scholars who have never actually conducted such research, which becomes evident. It's not in their paradigm. This canon was already chosen before there were Pharisees in Jerusalem and before there was ever a Catholic church. Those factions do not get to legitimately form councils to vote on that, which was already settled, fact, long before, even in archaeology. You are entering a zone for truth with our new Apocrypha test series. Follow along and together we will dispel the myths of modern scholarship and man are they profoundly lacking in intellect on this topic you will see. Not anymore. Download your copies of Volume 1 and Volume 2 of our comprehensive Apocrypha research free in ebook today or get your copies at apocryphatest.com. All links are there. We now begin. So we know Tobit is accurate in portraying a living Nephilim as a demon because, well, they are. Uh, they have always had demon spirits which become disembodied at death and have no place to go. So they wander the dry places until they somehow get invited into a human or animal. They can't possess you without your permission. Uh, for they can trick you into getting your permission, but you have to acquiesce. For Tobit to call a Nephilim a demon remains accurate, and only a living one could smell and physically harm Sarah's seven former suitors. That's pretty easy. However, is Asmodeus even a real figure, or did Tobit make him up? As, well, they try to accuse him of that. Now, it's hard to believe one calling themselves a scholar, especially of the Bible, would not know of this demon of wrath who just so happens to be famous. But it demonstrates they aren't experts on Tobit, nor the Bible, as they have never researched this topic. Was their demon named Asmodeus in valid, bona fide history? Indeed. There was. Are you kidding? Uh, that's not really a question from one who is remotely academic nor educated on this because clearly they did not bother to educate themselves. We'll show you. And he is not obscure, but very well known specifically in the area of media where Sarah lived. Imagine that. And oops, we'll show you Asmodeus by name is even recorded in our modern Bible canon outside of Tobit and in his time even. Wow, so this has never been a point. Here we go. However, we want to begin by addressing a comment that came through from someone who actually thought they had a challenge, I guess, uh, to the fish lasting 10 days. Uh, it's amazing how often we get, you know, gotchas, and yeah, we know a lot of times it comes from one person <laughs> who, who is, I obviously must be paid to agitate this channel because uh, he writes a blog, you know, I don't even know, weekly, something like that, just ridiculous uh, stuff, and it's never even made any sense. But, sorry, I said that they thought, but let, let's be clear. 
they can't think, right? It, th this isn't thinking, this objection. It's a hollow false objection to start, and their answer in assumption is false. They, they don't even understand uh, the history of fish preservation. We welcome challenges, though, on this channel. For those who actually watch, uh, you're welcome to ask questions. We've been answering questions for seven years now. Uh, and we give detailed answers. We give very good answers, uh, researched answers. Um, but what we don't allow is we don't allow debate in ignorance, you know, either without watching the video, especially when we address that very question in the very video they just watched. And it's like, huh? How could you ask that question? No, we, we mute that crap. It's our channel, our rules. But this one is very clearly framed as a gotcha. We know probably where it came from. We don't really care. So their comment basically says, the fish that Tobit ate for 10 days, well, it's impossible. Cha, gotcha. Fish can only last 24 hours without refrigeration unless they're dried. Is that even true? Uh, no, that's false because there's other preservation methods other than drying fish. Oops, so the, the point is already false from the beginning. But the bigger thing is they can't even think. We see this kind of thinking often where one applies modern thinking and either forgets that the ancients, well, they were far smarter than you and I, and they figured out ways, for instance, to preserve fish other than drying them out especially in a case where one is traveling. So how would they do that? See, that's the next thing. But they don't bother to ask those questions. We're supposed to answer their stupidity. That's the way this works, evidently. Well, we're answering, so there you go. However, far larger and incredibly inept, and this, and this is why I really want to point this out, Tobit does not tell us what time of year this trip occurred. Hmm... Now think about that. Oh, wait a minute. Where was the trip made? To media. Media's where? In the mountains! Okay, so a cooler climate to start with? Oops. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, most of the trip was in the mountains where refrigeration wouldn't be needed much of the year. So the, this isn't even a point. And they thought they had a gotcha, and they framed it that way too. Oops. The ancients did not only dry fish to preserve them, by the way, they salted them. They pickled them, and there are other ways to smoke them to last longer as well, longer than 24 hours. Again, just thinking in our modern mindset, because we do have refrigerators, imagine living a life where you never had a refrigerator. Maybe you figure out ways to do these kinds of things. Now, these techniques have produced as much as a two-year preservation process. Ah, oh, duh. So this is not a point, even on the preservation method as a whole, which they only cite one falsely. It's a false paradigm in which they try to attack Tobit uh, and say, oh, we have to discount it as scripture uh, because, well, you can't read. Yeah, maybe we're not going to do that. No scholar we saw mentions this, so it's not a scholarly objection, not that it, it wouldn't surprise us if it came from some scholar somewhere. They do tend to just come up with a, well, but what about? Yeah, okay, go answer your question. Go do the research and find out. You're a scholar, aren't you? Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> Sorry, didn't, didn't mean to assume that because you have a title and even a PhD behind your name that you would actually be able to research. Realize all Tobit tells us here, and this is in chapter 14, verse 2, uh, is that there is an eight-year period from the time he was blinded. Now, we know that he was blinded on a specific date, right? Because it's the Feast of Pentecost, or Shavuot in Hebrew, Pentecost in Greek, same feast. Anyone that tells you otherwise doesn't know the difference. Uh, between the Greek word and the Hebrew word because they're the same. They're used the same. They're interchanged throughout Scripture, especially in the book of Tobit. But we are not told what time of year that eight-year period occurred. Uh, you know, if you tell someone, you know, eight years later, I did, did you mean eight years to the day? 
or oh it must not it must be a lie is that the way it works well there's scholars that try to handcuff things based on such stupid thinking of course you wouldn't in the mountains of media this is certainly not an issue for refrigeration most of the year uh, with salting smoking and pickling techniques uh, and the fact that Tobias was traveling with a oh oh oops forgot an archangel who could figure out how to use parts of the fish to well heal blindness and cast away a demon but somehow this big old archangel well he just couldn't figure out how to preserve a fish for 10 days oops oh and one last thing the fish jumping out of the water serving himself up basically as a meal or meals uh, is a fourth miracle in this account. Uh, yes, there are miracles here. Uh, uh, wake up scholars and learn how to read. Now, I don't know about you, but I happen to have grown up in a water town, and there was lots of fishing uh, in many formats, whether by boat or on a pier or standing on the, the riverbank, whichever. Uh, maybe you've heard a fishing tale of a fish jumping onto a pier or the shoreline or a boat. Uh, maybe, uh, again, it may well be a tale, but even if that ever happened, in this case, the timing especially makes it a miracle, as this happened to uh, Tobias on the way uh, and provided provision for a long journey. That is no coincidence. It is divine intervention and, by definition, an unexplained miracle. How about that? Now, of course, this is a demon, and as the Bible is not a catalog of demons ever, uh, we have to go to what we call Iran today. That's the area where Sarah lived, where this demon was harassing. Um, so basically... Uh, this is in that area, especially a very famous demon, really no surprise, and not a mystery to history at all. We find their history in that area, uh, yes, within their religion of Zoroastrianism, uh, Mazdaism, Mithraism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's other religions too from there by similar name that would mention uh, Asmodeus, even in some of their lore in other ways that is not necessarily uh, part of any of those religions either. Uh, this ain't rocket science, folks, but it certainly is not scholarly to throw stones at the Book of Tobit over something so easy to find in history. This is pathetic when you think about it. Wait till you see this. This name, Asmodeus, is actually two words, uh, Asmodeus, uh, in Avastan, uh, or the old Persian language, essentially. Uh, very well documented uh, in before Tobit, for that matter, we'll show you. Oh, and where did Sarah live? Well, Media Persia, same area. Duh, uh, scholars can't bother to go to their history uh, just to learn this. I mean, it it's really shouldn't be that hard for them. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, amazing. For them to sit back and criticize over this point, it, it's just foolish. Uh, and they should be embarrassed. In Avastan, this is the demon of wrath, which is what the name actually means. Uh, and, oh, that happens to match Tobit's exact representation. How about that? Unbelievable, this would even be questioned by a so-called scholar. Now, as time progressed, Middle Persian rendered this with an X in the beginning and New Persian with a K, but it's all the same character. Uh, this is, by the way, an incredibly well-sourced encyclopedia entry, right, from uh, Encyclopedia Iranica. Uh, so you can see they nailed this down pretty, pretty easy to find. Uh, why can't scholars do even a simple Google search? Asmodeus is very well known in Persian documents historically and no mystery at all, uh, even by name. Tobit didn't make him up as he already existed long before in history says so. Now let's see a little further. The Avesta, now what's that? Oh, just an 
ancient historic writing that precedes Tobit. <laughs> Oops. Thus, no, Tobit didn't make this up. Uh, here's the demon, Asmodeus, the demon of wrath. Expresses abhorrence of asthma. Again, if you add the word demon, uh, it's as Asmodeus, basically. Uh, Asmodeus is the Greek form of it. Same thing, this is the origin. For he endangers the integrity of the good religion of the Mazdeenesins, however you say that. He distorts the intention and meaning of the sacrifice through brutality against cattle and violence and war and drunkenness. Wow, um, pretty good match to Tobit. But what is this they are quoting here? What is this, the Avesta? What's the Avesta? Oh, just a document that precedes Tobit, that's all. Let's go there. The Avesta is the scripture of Zoroastrianism. Okay, now, is that Bible? No, of course not. It is the occult. Do we accept it as Bible? No. Do you have to in order to see that Asmodeus is a named demon? Uh, no, not at all. Nowhere does Tobit quote the Avesta. No, he's just using the known name. The point is, though, the name Asmodeus is there in history, uh, in Persia, in media, and well known to be the name of this very demon exactly as Tobit represents even in the area where the demon lived. This is a big duh for any scholar criticizing the book of Tobit over this. That is not criticism. It is illiteracy. Again, he was a living Nephilim in Tobit's time, and when Raphael bound him, he would have died at that point because there's no escaping the binding of an archangel. There is no <laughs> way for even the watcher fallen angels to ever escape and the bible says they never do they are only released to be judged on the day of judgment that's it and they aren't released in the terms of freed to roam around they're released to stand before the judge and be judged and consumed with eternal fire and gone that's it at that point he would have been disembodied and he would have become a prince demon powerful demon in fact now this is a long article because it is so super well sourced as you can see the sources uh, we highlight them screen by screen we're not going to go through all of that but you can look it up for yourself uh, it's easy to find uh, you can see each reference there all along the way asmodeus is so well documented and this is questioned in scholarship only by illiterates. They are not Bible scholars, and they're not scholars on this topic. In fact, in one account, Mithra will smite Asmodeus. No, he won't. He's another demon. <laughs> so that ain't going to work. You can see account after account. This was known, though. Uh, Asmodeus is a powerful prince demon in Persia, uh, religious documents say so, regardless of the fact that it's a different religion. doesn't matter. The point is, before Tobit, there was a demon named Asmodeus, well recorded. No surprise. Again, none of these descriptions nor claims uh, or even the prophecy of those books really matter. We are not saying any. there's any truth to any of that. We're just covering the name here. Only the Bible, uh, well, actually does have Asmodeus documented, uh, and even in Media Persia, very well. Uh, again, these are the era of 1500 to 1000 BC in origin. And Tobit wrote in the 600s, uh, so that's, you know, 400 to 900 years later, uh, yeah. Uh, scholars don't know this? Wow. I mean, they even try to place Tobit written in 200 BC or so and uh, because they have a copy found in Qumran uh, that's a copy and they forgot that it's a copy and they date that as, as if it's an original. But the point is, uh, so it's even worse there. That's 800 years or more later. Wow. I mean, they should know this, really. Come on. Now, we continue to see Asmodeus throughout the Middle Persian era uh, after Tobit. They estimate that 
450 BC to about 650 AD, no matter whether you find a, a different date for the Middle Persian era that starts a century before or after or whatever, really doesn't matter. That's centuries after Tobit wrote his book, and Asmodeus is still there uh, centuries later. Uh, he's there before Tobit, and he's there after Tobit, uh, in documented history by name as a powerful demon of wrath. Uh, I mean, this is so easy to affirm that Toba didn't just make up something strange here. They even have Asmodeus in their prophecy books. Again, we do not believe their prophecies, and we really don't care uh, what they have to say in prophecy. We have plenty in the Bible that we trust. But the point is, the demon is still known to the end times, even in the Persian lore. This is not a mystery and not something a scholar could really miss, unless they simply don't bother to even look it up, and yet open their mouths and criticize in ignorance. It's funny, there is also this demon character, in fact, here, I'll just note this, named Soros. Hmm, is that a coincidence? by George, no pun intended, oh no, actually, yes, there is, uh, it just may be, just saying, the references are many of this prince demon of wrath, or Asmodeus, as you've seen, uh, that's what the name means, uh, and wow, I mean, I, how can anyone question this and call themselves a scholar? They're not a scholar, that's, that's the real point, they weren't acting like it, not on this topic, not on this criticism, they are not owed such title, and they need to take the initials off their name because they haven't earned them. Even outside of Iranian lore and religious documents, the Talmud also mentions Asmodeus by name the demon. Another occult document for sure, no doubt, and we don't use that as scripture either, but the point is the name was not a mystery. And then our article makes the link to this very same character mentioned throughout the time as the same Asmodeus of the Book of Tobit. Boom! So there you go. The connection's there, even in this article. It even addresses the stupid scholars who then try to discount Tobit, their real purpose in clarifying <laughs> that they have no point. <laughs> the fact this exists in the Avesta, is very clear. The Middle Persian era is preserved and the same. They rightly note Tobit has no conflicts regarding this character of Asmodeus, the prince demon, and this is not a point as he really exists in history definitively. The etymology is solid and well supported. Uh, this is all the same demon of wrath, Asmodeus. So is there a principality, a prince demon named Asmodeus? Yep, there show is, and that is super well documented. However, let's go back to their point here that Asmodeus is not in the Bible, not the modern Bible canon. They mean, of course, their Pharisee Bible, because, well, folks, that is a lie from the start, because it's missing the book of Tobit, which is scripture, but we haven't quite proven that yet. We will. Uh, don't worry, in the videos coming, though we already started with historicity uh, with the Dead Sea Scrolls, which makes it inspired scripture to the only keepers of Bible canon in all of history up to the first century. Oops. Now, they just don't know how to read, it appears. Uh, let's take a look at the Bible and see, is Asmodeus there in the modern canon? Yes, he is. Can we really find Asmodeus in the modern Bible canon? Yep, we sure can. Uh, even directly, when you look at the Hebrew and Greek, many scholars use such, uh, but fail to actually check it in this uh, instance before rendering opinions on topics like this uh, and proven you know, ignorance, really. Willing ignorance, uh, they're just propagating a paradigm because they don't want Apocrypha to be inspired scripture. The problem is, most of it is. And that's fact. Asmodeus is not some made-up figure in Tobit. He's known 
uh, and recorded. Again, we already covered many centuries before in history and even after uh, Tobit was written. And this also includes the modern Bible canon. Here we go. Some have said, but the Bible does not call demons by name. Yes, it does. Key point, those that they're not considering, uh, when they are alive, especially. Yeah, Goliath was a Nephilim, but with a demon spirit. He's still Goliath. He still exists. He's a demon. Og of Bashan was a living Nephilim, just as Asmodeus He's a demon. He has a demon spirit. Some of the same scholars just leveled that opposite point, claiming the Bible has to name every demon, in fact, uh, as well as every angel in order for a text that was and really remains Bible canon and inspired uh, to be accepted as such. <laughs> you know, that lacks a moral compass, really. Uh, and those are not Bible scholars and not even honest men and women. Hmm. Here he is right here. They just don't bother to look at the word. That's all. The ancient Persian deity, a demon who was worshipped by some, Ashima from 2 Kings 17. Ashima is the same as the Avistan Asma. And add the word demon, ah, in Avistan, and you get the origin of Tobit's Asmodeus, written in Hebrew originally. Uh, what's that? Second Kings. Mm, how about that? And then in Greek, of course, as well. These replacements of northern Israel brought their pagan gods, including Ashima, Asmodeus, uh, Ashima demon, Asmodeus, that's the same thing, uh, into the land of northern Israel. They infused that with the worship of Yahuwah, uh, which Yahuwah rejected then and still does. Uh, today, that's known as rabbinic Judaism. It was Phariseeism in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament. Notice doesn't exist in the Old Testament because they weren't there. Uh, the temple priests didn't call themselves rabbis in the Old Testament. So what changed? Well, what changed is a new religion was installed by the usurpers of the priesthood who attacked the temple, foreigners who came in and even came from Ashmodai, Modi, yeah, a town named for Asmodeus. How about that? Uh, Ashima, Asima, is the same as the Persian demon of wrath. False religions worship demons and fallen angels. What are demons? Nephilim, which are demons. Uh, you know, same thing. Understand that. Ashima is a prince demon. Bear in mind, this was written later by Jeremiah, and uh, it covers the very time of Tobit. So in Tobit's time, even the Bible mentions Asmodeus by name. There you go. This is such a misinformed question, really, uh, from scholars who have done zero research to answer their question. Uh, that's called gross negligence. They are not protecting the flock. They are protecting their jobs. Oh, wait, the love of money is, yeah, we all know, the root of all evil. Hmm. We even see the, this uh, prince of Persia, a demon so powerful, Gabriel was detained from bringing the message to Daniel. Now, in Daniel 10, bear in mind, Daniel lived well after Tobit. Right? So this occurred after Tobit's lifetime, which means Asmodeus was dead. The, the physical uh, Asmodeus Nephilim was dead, and only his demon existed as a prince demon. He is the prince of Persia. Indeed, Daniel 10, uh, we see this account where the archangel Michael had to step in and assist Gabriel. Because Gabriel was being detained by this powerful prince demon. How about that? Now, certainly not a man had to be a demon, not a king, not a human prince. No way they could detain an angel. It's not Satan, as he's never indicated as just Prince of Persia. No, uh, this is a regional demon, very powerful. 
this is Asmodeus, clearly. Uh, even though his name isn't mentioned, remember, he was bound by Raphael when he was alive, and he died in Egypt after he was bound at some point. And that would be before Daniel. Now, we also find a people group, and, and this is pretty, I mean, this is huge that this has become so hidden uh, in Bible scholarship because the enemy is within, that's why. Uh, I'm not saying all scholars are, I'm saying they're educated by them and they're the ones in control of the, the whole paradigm. The Pharisees control seminaries um, and because it's, it's their concept, really. Um, basically, uh, this is a group named for and aligned with Asmodeus, at least in doctrine, but likely bloodline. In the Greek Septuagint, this is well laid out, there is a people in Genesis 10, 14, uh, identified as the Asmodeans, basically, or Hasmoneme. Um, notice they're mixing the Hebrew and the Greek there, uh, as the end of the name, I am, is the plural in Hebrew. Uh, later, this will be rendered in the occult book of Maccabees, uh, which we will obliterate, already do in the book in volume two, uh, as the Hasmoneans, one of the names of the Maccabees. Oops. <laughs> well, <laughs> these are just facts, folks. This is a people who originate from Asmodeus the Nephilim, whether by blood or by doctrine, either way, doesn't matter. Uh, they, in turn, fathered the Philistines, which we know the Bible says Nephilim are among them. Then it further identifies that these are the origin of the Gaphtarim. Odd, Gath is the home of Goliath. So the Gaphtarim, the people from Gath, are, oops, Nephilim. Goliath, his five giant brothers, are noted in Scripture. Uh, Nephilim brothers, six fingers, six toes, in fact, I believe in, the, in that account. Oops. Uh, that's always been in Scripture since it was translated. Uh, this was known. So Tobit is using Asmodeus not just as the Persian known demon of wrath, fitting to his narrative, but a real figure who had a people who were fathered by him and they fathered other Nephilim, the Philistines and those of Gath. We know the giants are among both. Now, we're not saying all Philistines are Nephilim, nor are we saying all from Gath are, but the point is that's there. He is clearly citing the same figure that Daniel represented as the prince of Persia. Uh, because Persia has a deity uh, known as Asmodeus uh, that is that demon of wrath and was worshipped in 2 Kings 17 as a god, uh, even though a false one. Uh, so really, Tobit is quoting 2 Kings 17 as Asmodeus Ashmodeus. Uh, his name is even pronounced in Greek Ashmodai, Modi. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that where the Maccabees, the Hasmoneans, originate? Oops. And it's not in Jerusalem. It's not in Judea. Oops. They were foreign conquerors from a place called Modi or Ashmodi, <laughs> named for this same prince demon, based on the infusion of worship that is labeled there in or exposed there in 2 Kings 17. I mean, these things are right there in Scripture, folks, and Asmodeus is certainly there. Oops. One starts to wonder why they do not want us to know this. So, Asmodeus is even mentioned in our modern Bible canon as well. Fact. So what is a demon who can physically smell and harm a human by strangling? Well, it is a living Nephilim, period. That's pretty easy. Scholars should have figured that out. Asmodeus was alive in Tobit and would have died once he was bound by Raphael in Egypt at the end of the story. 
Demon spirits do not necessarily smell, nor can they touch us. They can't. Uh, this is so obvious. Anyone ridiculing this is no scholar. That's for certain. They do not even know the origin of demons. Asmodeus was an historic character in media centuries before Tobit existed and centuries after. Those looking for the Bible to catalog all demons or they don't exist, they would say. Uh, well, they aren't academic. They aren't scholarly on anything for that matter. Uh, they can't even think. However, in this case, Asmodeus is very directly mentioned even in the modern Bible canon. And Tobit did not fabricate this name, uh, nor this entity. For a scholar to not know that, there was a prince demon of wrath in the area where Sarah lived. Well, it's just simply gross negligence. They need to shut their mouths in criticizing things that they have never researched and they are not experts on in the slightest. They certainly prove they're not. As Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does. Well, at least his mama did. Now, We'll move on to historicity of the book of Tobit as Bible canon. Uh, we're going to talk about Tobit's tithe in another video uh, and get into some of the quotes there uh, that are uh, driven uh, financially in that arena uh, that are ridiculed in ignorance. And we'll discuss prophecy from this book as well. So we're not done with it, but we hope all can see by now. The book of Tobit is vetting very well as inspired scripture as all of these ridiculous speculative points prove illiterate. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy our other platforms and websites all in the description box. We have published nine books, I'm sorry, ten actually now, in three years and we ain't stopping including our latest Tagalog version of The Search for King Solomon's Treasure and our recent releases that go with the series Apocryphos, uh, Volumes 1 and 2, now both available in print in the Philippines on Shopee, as well as on Amazon Worldwide. Visit apocryphatest.com and download the ebook free, or you can acquire it in print if you wish. More to come. We love you all, and always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.